Look at that. You guys got the whole setup now. The lighting got stuff in the background. It all looked the, good. All fucking morning. <laughs> we have the same shirt that's on the wall, too. Yeah, hey, it's my favorite <laughs> shirt from Midwest Streetcars. I'm not going to do an intro. We'll just roll right into it. Because uh -huh. when I made the video with Chief, I kind of botched the intro. And that's the <laughs> one that people picked out to make fun of me with. So we'll just skip over that. Do you want to start with talking about the, uh, the TV show? We can do whatever you want. Okay, well, then let's start with that then. We'll start okay. with the TV show, then afterwards we can roll through some of the questions I have and some of the questions I've gotten from some of cool. my fans. So you were originally going to race in Caddy Jack in this upcoming episode for the show, correct? Yes, they then, basically invited us in Caddy Jack because it's just a small tire street race. And mm -hmm. we had been filming the 405 show, Mega Cash Days and America's List. So we were out of town for a couple months doing that. And then when we got back home and he had invited us to that race, we got Katie Jack out and started working on it. And we went out and tested one night and I just didn't feel like the car was running right. And we brought it back home. It like wouldn't do a burnout and it wouldn't let me stall it. And it was just not acting right. And we brought it back to the shop and started looking at it and taking it apart and everything. And it was not happy um earlier that summer i had tried to race it at a like street race around here in hinton and like two days before we found out that it was like pretty broken and i guess it was still damaged from that it had hurt a couple bearings so it just wasn't going to make that race and then it was like the day after that oklahoma had the really bad ice storm and it just we didn't have power, like it wasn't gonna happen. We couldn't use a lift, we couldn't get the motor out of it. It just, nothing was going right. So we called JJ and we were like, hey, sorry, it's just not gonna happen. And he was like, hey, just come out here still, like we'll figure it out, just come out and hang out. So we didn't have power anyway. So we went out there and he offered me to drive um, the purple car that I think Molly races. And when we got there, that's when he was like, hey, I just, I want you to drive zip tie, you know? So it was cool. So was that the, I think I was mistaken in one of my videos. I said, cause I heard you guys say the purple car. Then I thought that was the new zip tie, but was this the one before the pro charger one? Was that one that you drove still nitrous? Yeah, no? this is okay. the, yeah, it's a small block nitrous one. Okay. Um, not that pro charger one. Okay. Yeah. That was, I was so. mistaken with that. I was, cause I heard purple car and zip tie kind of just put the two together and assumed it was right. But then, so this was out yeah. in Vegas, correct? You'll the actually same see, yeah, they race on a road north of Vegas. And was that, so the same spot that all the uh, other racing and stuff, right? When you guys were out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They got like a whole we spot did. Out there. We did. We one in the same spot. Yeah. They have a spot that they're, I think they're pretty usually going there. Um, I think it's where they did fastest in America last season. Mm -hmm. I think it's all the same road. Yeah, it's a really shitty chip seal road. <laughs> it's extremely dusty. So did you enjoy driving the car stuff? Cause like, was that, I apologize. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit, kind of your experience or background with mm -hmm. racing, but was that kind of like a different level of car compared to what you had raced in before? Yeah. Cause would you say it's a higher level than Caddy Jack is or about the same or like where in comparison would it stand? Um, no, it's definitely different than Caddy Jack. Um, I had never raced a tube chassis car. Um, I grew up in drag in dragsters, and then with Caddy Jack, I never had a cage in it until this winter. So after all of the hurting the motor and this race happened and everything, so I had never raced a tube chassis car. So it was definitely different than what I'm used to. Um, and I had never been in that car. So it was pretty crazy to see the car and then just get in and enter the race in it, you know, but Caddy Jack is a LS with a blower and then I have nitrous. And this was just a small block. I don't remember what size it was um, with nitrous and tube chassis and everything, but it just, it drives a lot different than Caddy Jack did. Like Caddy Jack was independent rear. So that's something that I was used to. This car wasn't like that, you know, it just, it was different. Like it had a trans brake, which I've raced on a trans brake before in a dragster, but not in Caddy Jack. I put brake that, but it was different, but it was cool. You know, it was, it made me want 
that's actually like what made me want to go drop Caddy Jack off to get the different changes that we've done. Like we put after that race is when we dropped it off and got the solid rear done, you know? So mm -hmm. it actually inspired me, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. It was so cool. How did, I haven't seen what happened yet, but yeah. you, by the time this is going up, it'll have already aired. So it's okay to talk about it. So could you give uh -huh. us a like, like recap of the race and what it was like, yeah. and how everything went down, you could say? Uh yeah, it was cool. I, we got there and we showed up, JJ offered me to drive zip tie and I told him that I would be honored to do that. And, um, we entered the race, we paid the money. Um, I think we drew trips or call outs. I don't remember. Um, I raced first round and, um, I'm not really used to the chases of the race racing it personally. Like, obviously I've been there for it on America's list and stuff, but me doing it personally it is chase's race and arm drop which i've never done arm drop so it was cool and especially on that shitty of a road like if i would have taken caddy jack out there it would have been when it was still independent rear and it just it sucks on something that shitty with the independent rear like it doesn't hook so it was really cool to be in a car that works on those kind of roads you know and I was scared. <laughs> like <laughs> I've never raced someone else's car, you know? So I kept telling them like, I don't want to crash your car because everyone has said how shitty of a road that was. And like, oh yeah. And this person crashed here and this person crashed here and they're naming off all these people that crashed here. And I was like, God damn guys, like <laughs> you're giving me all of the confidence, you know? But mm -hmm. I was like, I just don't want to hurt your car. You know, like I've never raced someone else's car. So that was new. And it's, it's scary. If I fuck up my own shit, it's my money, you know, mm -hmm. but to be in someone's like, I know how I feel about my car. So I can't even imagine just being like, Oh yeah, go ahead. Race my car on this mm -hmm. shitty ass road. <laughs> like yeah. it was crazy, but it was nice. Like it was really nice of them to let me do that. So is that something you think you could like, or you're looking forward to doing again? Like if the opportunity were to arise, would you do that again? You would say race in someone else's car. Cause like you're just saying, I mean, people are always asking cause like I make videos and stuff. So people are always thinking, Oh, drive my car for a video. I'm like, I don't want to drive anyone else's car. I, I have enough problems with my own stuff. I don't want to, like mm -hmm. you said, mess up someone else's stuff at all. So I'm terrified of that. But if the opportunity were to present itself again, would you be willing to do something similar or even maybe yeah. step up to like a big tire level car one day? I think it would depend who it is. Like, I think there's people that, I mean, in my head, I truly knew that if I did crash their car or something, they wouldn't hate me, you know, but if someone crashed my car, I'd probably hate them, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it would depend who it was. Um, if, I'm comfortable with doing it. Like there's a lot at stake there, you know, and it's not easy to get in a car that you don't know. Like I remember even like when I sat in it, their panel for all their stuff, like turning the car on in the water and everything was like the only car that I've driven with one of those is Justin's car, like driving it around in and out of the trailer or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, I know the order he has those in and like, I know how to shift his car and everything. So like getting in someone else's car, you don't know, like I got in that car and they were different orders, not saying that's wrong or anything, but it's all in a different order. And like, they have different shifters and stuff. So I'm like <laughs> trying to race and I'm like, how the fuck do I do this shifter? <laughs> like, I'm not used to this little button here, like, or I can't reach it because this car isn't made for me or whatever, you know, but I think it all depends on, the situation, you know, I was just comfortable in that situation. Like I knew they wouldn't hang me if I did fuck up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like I'm really looking forward to seeing the show tonight. And I would try and talk about it some more, but again, mm -hmm. I haven't seen it. So I'll probably, we'll do something else later, but kind of want to transition into how did you just get into drag racing to begin with? Because people see you on street outlaws all, all over the place, but mm -hmm. how, what was your like origin story to drag racing like? Um, my dad, yeah, he, my dad is, was a mechanic my whole life, just at a Chevy dealer in the suburbs of Chicago. Um, and he, raced, yeah, my dad actually worked in the town that you work, that you live in, but oh, seriously, yeah. Um, he was a mechanic in 
that's what I grew up doing. Like when I was little, my dad was building an 85 Camaro, like a third gen, um, in our garage, like welding the shit together. And like, he bought like a kit and was doing it. And I remember like always being there and I would like bring him tools and stuff. And my dad was very like, not hard on me, but real, you know, like Mm -hmm. if I ever had questions, he answered them. And like, my dad taught me how to do so much, you know, and just, I grew up doing that stuff. And then my dad started racing when I was like a couple years old, uh, once he got his car done. I mean, he raced his whole life, but once he got that car done, he started racing it and I was always there with him. And, um, when I was, I think eight, my mom and dad bought me a junior dragster and I did that for like, I think seven years until I was 15, I think. And then I wanted to get a full size dragster. So I sold that. Um, I worked, my dad helped me and I bought a full size dragster And then I raced that for a while until I decided that I didn't want to do the dragster thing anymore. And I got, I wanted to get a car. So I stopped racing the dragster and I went back to helping my dad more so with his racing because we were racing together at the same time. Um, And it's just him, you know, like it wasn't like I could just hang out and do nothing and go race on the weekends. Like my mom and dad had like a lot of rules. Like we had to (laughs) work on the car. Like they weren't going to let us just go out and race it, Mm -hmm. you know, because those run on alcohol and you can't just let it sit in there. So you have to clean it out after the races and stuff. So we always, it was like, if you don't clean it out, then you don't race next weekend, you know? So I grew up doing it and my parents always helped me follow my dreams you know they did everything they could that's awesome I just grew up in it yeah they're they're amazing you know I wouldn't be in the situation if it wasn't like that you know so you mentioned briefly wanting to get into a like a, a real car what was your first car like driving car or driving car and race car my first like real race car is caddy jack um but my first driving car um i drove my dad's s10 (laughs) it was like a (laughs) shitty 90s s10 that he gave me when i turned 16 (laughs) and then i crashed it so um i'm sure he regrets that (laughs) decision but whatever um I didn't have a race car though until Caddy Jack. When I moved here, we bought Caddy Jack for me to like drive around town. And then we put a cam in it. We were going to put exhaust on it and everything and make it sound cool and just be a cool daily. But then um, it escalated pretty quickly. Yeah. So it's a spare car now. Is there any reason why? But Caddy- I had just raced dragsters my whole life. Is there any reason to why Caddy Which Jack, one? you like Cadillac so much? Because if I'm not mistaken, you guys got the S yeah. drive around as well. It's like you got the whole yeah. thing. I don't know. I don't know why I do. Um, Justin does too, but he has a, another Cadillac. I don't know what year it is, but he has a Cadillac for low rider too. It's green, but I don't know why I like them so much. <laughs> they were always my dream cars. Like it was my dream to have a CTSV and then we bought Caddy Jack and that was going to be my car. And then, um, I did some things that I wasn't supposed to, and I went to jail and, um, I wasn't allowed to drive Caddy Jack for a year. So I was driving Wanda around and Justin wanted his truck back. So I went out and bought the Escalade. So it's pretty cool because it can tow Caddy Jack around too. So that's the pictures of that would be so cool you got caddy jack on the trail and the escalade pulling yeah. an awesome setup right there mm-hmm. yeah because we we have an open trailer but it kind of sucked to use uh the dually for it because we normally leave that hooked up to our big trailer so but everyone would shit on me anytime i used the big trailer on <laughs> <Hey Jack. laughs> so it works out so could you give us any updates on what's going on with Caddy Jack right now? I know you guys have been yeah. doing a lot to it and you haven't said too much about it, but could you give us a, as much information yeah. as you're willing to give in regards to it? 
Yeah, we only have uh, one little secret about it, but um, we took basically all of the stock things off of it. So it was stock motor, blower. Um, I had a stock torque converter for most of it. I went to an aftermarket one towards the end. Um, stock transmission, stock, uh, rear end, differential, a lot of things were stock on it. Um, so I, it was that race in Vegas that we did that just really inspired me to start doing small tire street racing and the independent rear just doesn't work on chip seal and like shitty roads. Like anytime I would go street racing, it would have to be like a perfect concrete road for it to make a good pass. Like if it was shitty concrete or anything else, it was going to smoke the tires. Um, so we when we talked to a shop around here, it's in Tulsa, but it's called Skyview and they make like a bolt-in rear cradle kit for fifth gen Camaros. So we talked to them cause that's like a pretty similar car to mine. Um, we talked to them and we were like, do you think that you can make one for a CTSB? So we bought the, we went up there and bought the kits from them cause they have a rear cradle and a front cradle kit. And we bought the kits, brought them back home. And then um, we went to go put them in and the rear one was just like a little off. Oh no. Okay, you're still oh, there. We're good, we're good. Uh, the rear one was a little bit off. So we had to do a little bit of editing. We're good. Uh, we had to edit it, just like fabricate on it a little bit to get it to fit, but we got it in and everything. So it has, a uh nine inch rear end like real shocks and springs and everything now um and then we went to do the front kit that they sell and it didn't line up at all so uh we talked to them and they were like just bring the car up here and we can kind of make a kit off of your car and then i'll have a kit and then also now other ctsbs can buy that kit from them so now they'll sell the full ctsb kit for the front and rear that people can go buy from them that will bolt in oh, so awesome. it didn't get cut. yeah that's what's cool is like it's not cut up it's not back half it's not anything like that they're kits that anybody could buy so uh we worked with them to do that and so it has the front and rear done um we put a cage in it because <laughs> i was already going 880 so it's just not safe mm -hmm, yeah. um and it needs to be so if we put a cage in it, um, it'll get a turbo 400, uh, it'll get a real drive shaft. We haven't done the torque converter yet. Um, it's still the same motor engine combo, same blower, uh, still nitrous. The whole motor stock and everything blower? will still be the same, but everything's ready. Which one? Is it the stock blower on the car still? Yeah, it's a yeah. stock one nine blower and then Jeffers performance uh ports it. So is that all with the car? You guys have like a ETA to when it'll be ready? Uh hopefully soon. The motor's back in it. Um it just needs the last couple things put in it and then it'll have to be wired. Um I still had the stock ECU and everything in it and we use HP tuners, but I think we're gonna go fuel tech on it just because it's a lot simpler um, and it's easy for Justin because his car has fuel mm -hmm. tech, so it'll be easy for both to be running the same programs, um, which that stuff takes a little bit, but hopefully soon. <laughs> so I, I definitely got, miss it, but. I got one question that I've gathered from my fans. I asked them, what's one, mm -hmm. if you could pick one thing to ask, what would it be? Yeah. And one thing they asked is, What's the deal with the S10, or I think you guys referred to it as the mini truck before, that mm -hmm. white, like nine, I think 90s, maybe 80s pickup truck. Do you guys have any update on that or have any plans for that? Um, we were working on it a little bit here and there and everything while Caddy Jack was at Skyview getting the front stuff done because we were just bored. Uh, we didn't have anything else to do. So we were working on it for a bit and that truck, uh, we call it the mini truck. It will, it fits all the daily driver rules. So 
um it kind of sucked because caddy jack was a daily driver like i drove it around and everything on drag radials and oklahoma let you do that stuff and um unfortunately it got ruled out of a lot of daily driver things um it was like anything because it was the fastest one so it was like anything that i did people were like let's find a rule so that that doesn't fit you know because like i took the seats and shit out of it so they were like, well, if you don't have stock seats, then you can't do it, but whatever. Um, so we kind of wanted something that would fit the daily driver races and that truck does. So that was kind of our plan, but it got put on hold while we're finishing Carry Jack. But I think after Carry Jack is done, we'll start doing that again, but it'll be cool. That'll be cool. I hope that when, if you guys do another one of those, like, I think it was the farm truck and Asian, they were the ones that put on the daily driver stuff to see you guys out in that. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty sweet. Cause what you guys race, you raced the Escalade and what chief raced the dually Mm -hmm. in the the last one. It kind of sucked. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to race. I definitely wanted to race Kevy Jack in it, but then they had the tire rule. I didn't even have a wheel that could fit that tire and my car probably wouldn't even make it down there on a drag radial, let alone a hard tire. So it definitely sucked. That's why we wanted something that could do a daily driver class, you know, and fit the rules. So then kind of transitioning into the TV show. So being like a part of it, and you guys said that you just have all kinds of stuff to do, like with the, the you guys refer to it as the interviews, like the sit down stuff, the amount mm-hmm. of time that yeah. takes, traveling to all this stuff, getting the car and everything ready, testing. Out of all of this stuff, what would you say is, your favorite part about the whole process of filming Street Outlaws? Um, I don't know. Um, I like te- um, I like testing for it, and the traveling is really cool. Like we get to meet a lot of cool people, and there's fans everywhere, so that's cool. But as far as the racing side goes, I love like the testing part. You know, like when it's not like win or lose like when we were in Nebraska there was nights that me and Justin would go out because it was just us and he's like in the car and I'm running around like a crazy person like trying to do it all and like those are like our favorite memories like we still laugh about it because he's like in the car with no helmet on like turned around trying to watch me back him up and I'm like got wheelie bar wrenches and lights hanging off of me and stuff. Like I dumped pimp juice all over my leg. Like that's the stuff. Those are like the best memories, you know, even like during it, you're exhausted and we've been up for weeks, you know, but those are like the coolest times, you know, Mm -hmm. I like that. But so going out testing, is it like, as the popularity of this show has grown and obviously with like you guys do r- do enclosed trailer and stuff now but does it mm-hmm. is it more difficult now you would say or like does it slowly progress and get more and more difficult to go out testing without people just like simply recognizing you guys the truck and trailer driving out or typically do you guys have no issues with getting stuff off like that um if we test here people know because they have learned where we where we test you know but most of the time we're doing it at like two three four in the morning when people are sleeping so that normally isn't a problem um people definitely I mean obviously I haven't been here for since the beginning of the show to know what it was like before but uh normally if someone sees us or follows us or something we uh make them help us <laughs> we're like watch for cops or block the road or something um or like there's there's a spot pretty close to our shop here that we used to test at but there's speed bumps now but um people would like wait for us to go there and they'd be like we didn't see any cops or something like they're the people were really cool you know the fans are amazing so uh the recognizing thing doesn't normally it's normally not even a problem. We're just like, come help us watch for cops or something. Like, (laughs) it's cool. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's bad. You know, the people are generally really nice, but I also don't know what it was like before. So then, so you guys were out in Nebraska for Mm -hmm. how long were you guys out there filming for? It was America's list. And then Uh did you guys film the 405 show out there as well? A part of it? Yeah. 
Yeah, we went out there for mega cash days and then um, that was like still, sorry, can you hear me? Did yeah, we... no, I can hear fine. I just said, I completely forgot mega cash yeah. out there as well. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, that's when like the world got pretty crazy and shut down and we tried to film here, but it just didn't really work um, because there's places to go and things to do. Um, so it just didn't work. Um, it wasn't safe for the standards of what was going on, you know, in the world. And they figured out that if they put us all out in the middle of nowhere with nothing to go and no, there nowhere to go and no places, nothing to do, like we couldn't, no, no one could get sick, you know? Mm -hmm. So they quarantined us in a small town and we all stayed healthy and it worked. So that was for mega cash days. So then they were like, why not just keep doing this? So we filmed mega cash days. We filmed the second half of our four or five show because we couldn't finish filming it before everything happened. And then after that, we filmed America's List. So I think they were there for like two months, maybe three months, but it was cool. It was, it was definitely like an experience that we'll never forget, you know? Those people were so nice too, but they were definitely tired of our shit. <laughs> so but. I wonder, there's like a, people had found out or someone, something had gone public about them reserving that road again for the future. Then they mm -hmm. canceled it. I assume, I, I'm just asking in case if you know something about this, people ask, this is some people ask me all the time, why aren't the street outlaws going back to Nebraska? Was that in place in case the things didn't start to go back to normal and they were unable to do something like no prep kings were the plans there to go back out and do that and then because stuff kind of went back to normal they then no longer needed to do that i think so um they don't really tell us everything you know oh. they kind of just say like hey we're starting on this day you know be here or whatever we'll be at your shop or whatever you know they we don't always get like too much background info on that kind of stuff, but um, I think people found it because the permit part of it. Yeah, like that, obviously that it's a TV. About. Yeah, it's a TV show, and they need permits, you know. So um, the permit part of it is public knowledge, I think. So that's people that are like researching or looking up some random town in Nebraska's uh, news. I don't know. They're the ones that found it because it's a public knowledge, I think, but. Um, I, I'm assuming that it was for in case racetracks didn't open up, but I don't know. <laughs> like yeah, that's well, just, hey, I, I just thought we that also anyway. thought that you worked for Pilgrim. So <laughs> you did some things. No, I do my own research and find stuff. But I mean, those people research and stuff like that, that's to the extreme. I don't go that in depth. Mm -hmm. I kind of just stay in social media and stuff. Yeah. I tried to research it one time, but that's a little town and their news is boring. So <laughs> I can't be reading all of that, <laughs> but so, yeah. What would you, like, out of everything you've done with the part of, it could be from street outlaws, it could be from just street racing with Caddy Jack outside of the show, or just anything else, what would you say is, like, your favorite street racing memory you have? Um, uh, I think with Justin's car, it would be when we tested just us and like how big of a shit show we were and like how stressful it was. Um, just because I was trying to do it by myself and I'm so stubborn that if someone tries to help me, I'm like, no, I don't need help. I'm fine. I have it all. But in reality, like one person, one person shouldn't be doing all of this. But um, looking back on it, like those are the things that bring us together, you know? Um, and I, th I think in my car, um, I entered a race in St. Louis, I think it was. Yeah. And I remember I drew someone first round and he was like so excited to draw me because he thought he was just going to kick my ass. And then he shit showed and I won that race or whatever. And Justin was so happy and like jumping around and stuff. That's the stuff that like, that makes me happy because he's happy you know so like it's not even just like that I won that race it's like fuck that guy because yeah <laughs> he's a hater <laughs> you know but 
that's the stuff that's like really cool is like the things that are cool for both of us you know obviously all the wins are amazing and like stuff like that but the things that we do for each other that's like the my happiest memories do you have any like specific moment you say from the tv show as well like you'd say being filmed for the tv show is there anything you'd pick out from that like my favorite yeah like favorite um I don't know like all of his wins are amazing you know and like our first year of racing together he was winning everything like <laughs> he won the race sorry talking on the other side <laughs> That's not my favorite, though. He said his favorite was... Uh, whatever. He's talking about um, driving those drift car things in the race in California. But I sucked at that. Well, I was mad in the beginning because I couldn't drive a stick shift car. And everybody else got to test that day. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was. I saw it on the road a little course. bit. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I know I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they asked me last minute if I wanted to do it just to make it an uh, even number. And I was like, I don't know, do I have to pay if I fuck it up? And they were like, no. <laughs> they are like, are you going to fuck it up? And I was like, probably. But then I was like, I can't drive stick shit. And they were like, what? And I was just like, yeah, I don't know how to drive stick. Like, I'm not old. <laughs> so they like brought everyone, all the other street outlaw guys and everything, they got to go on the road course and like test drive these cars for a whole day. And I got some other car and like had to go drive in the parking lot and like learn how to drive stick. And then the next day they were like, okay, let's race. And I was like, these, they all just got 12 hours of practice on this thing and I have it. <laughs> so that's not my favorite though. Um, I don't know. The Sin City Showdown was fun, but that was cool. I was I really, really like that how that came out, and a lot all the fans liked it as well. Because I had mm -hmm. no idea like what it was or what you guys were doing, and then how it all was put yeah. together for the show, and then watching it was it was really good. I hope you guys do more stuff like that in the future. It was cool. It was uh, Kai and JJ were already racing out there, so they had their cars there, and then um, somebody on the TV side had like said y'all should all do something together and. We were like, but they already have their cars out there. Like, that's not fair. And they were like, do something outside of those cars. So that's when we all decided to do uh, the Corvette and the Mustang, whatever, you know, because it. we were like, they've been out there on that road forever on their cars. Like, that would be Justin's first time in the Crow on that road. So we were like, fuck that. But it ended up being really fun. Um, it was cool. It's definitely crazy when everybody gets together, you know, because they don't act right. But... <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of fun memories and like there's a bunch that I can't that I don't remember until someone's like, do you remember when you guys won Bristol, you know, and you're like, oh my God, that was crazy, you know, or like even my brother was like, you guys didn't really break your rear end and take shots and I was like, whatever, <laughs> hater. <laughs> Here's the bill for it, you know, like it, there's so many really amazing times, you know, and of course there's bad times too, but it works out, you know. So you just have to keep trying. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you like they portrayed on the show, they were it was like you and Chief driving down some road in the escalade, talking about the idea for America's list. So I'm am I correct in saying you guys are the ones that came up with that idea? Yeah. And then mm -hmm. so you're always asking fans as well, like other ideas they have for the show. Do you have any other ideas similar to that? As of now, you're kind of trying to piece together something or like a future project projection you hope to see maybe as a show or an idea for like yeah. one episode and like some new idea for street outlaws in the future yeah of course we don't i mean we don't get to control everything you know but even the things that people suggest about like next season do this you know like we listen to all of that and we write it down like we will write down an idea and think and think like okay so will this work like we will write like the pros and cons, you know, um, we obviously don't just like get every show we want, you know, and I think a lot of the people wanted a show on the street with the other big characters, you know, so it worked out for sure. But um, we definitely 
we spend all of our time, like even we'll just be driving somewhere and we're like, but what if we do this rule? You know, like we think about it all the time. Like we care a lot <laughs> and we're always trying to make it better. And I don't think, I think there will never be a perfect set of rules, you know? Cause everyone's like, make rule, make this rule, make this rule. But like, if you put 20 rules on it, it's boring. You know, nobody wants to watch it. Nobody wants to do it, you know? Cause it's not like it would just be boring to watch. It would be boring to do. Um, it's hard to find that balance of not too many rules, not enough rules, like not rules with a lot of gray area. It's, I don't know, like we, we think about it all the time. <laughs> it really is like our life to us, you know? Well, yeah, I, I'll be like trying to go to bed. Then I get a notification on my phone from you replying to comments on my video at like 1 a.m. Because it's like yeah. people thinking stuff. It's like you guys don't see anything. But it's like, I mean, you're there on a, yeah. a YouTube channel such as mine replying to comments and stuff, answering questions. So it's like, it's really cool to see mm -hmm. like how invested. I mean, like I'm not. I don't want to sound disrespectful saying this or anything, but like, I feel like people would think you're not as all in as you guys really are with it. Yeah. It's, just, it's really, it's just something that's really cool. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of people think like we only are living that from first film to last film, you know, mm -hmm. but it's not that at all for us. I mean, some people might, some of the other racers or whatever, that might be how they do, but that's not how it is for us. Like, we live it every day, you know, whether it's testing the car, working on the car, or trying to figure out new rules or trying to figure out things that people want to watch. Like, we're always thinking about it. And it helps to read comments as bad as that is for you, you know, because whatever. But um, some of the ideas that we get come from the comments, you know, like, there's real people out there with real suggestions and they love this show, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's really good ideas and we might take like a quarter of someone's idea and like a quarter of someone else's and like come up with the other half, you know, but there's it, the input really helps in all of the commenting and liking and everything that everybody does on the post. That's what keeps the show alive, you know? So it, yeah, we put a lot, a lot of time into everything, but this is our life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's a pretty cool life to have. It but, is, yeah. So I, I, I kind of messed this up. I felt like all my other questions kind of transitioned smoothly into one another, but Sorry. I kind of got this one at, that I kind of just have here. Do you have any plans of building a big tire car, something like that, sometime in the future? I mean, we kind of discussed this in one of my streams and people got mad at me because they said I clickbaited a video about that. So we're going to try and get an actual yeah. answer now. So do you have any plans about doing mad. something like that? Someone's always going to get mad. Um, <laughs> don't worry about that, you know, but for like a plan, no. Um, I don't know. It's, it, it's weird, you know, like I, big tire cars are expensive, you know, and I like racing off of the show, you know, so I never really had the urge to go race on the show. Like I really like helping Justin and working on his car and everything and like turning it around and getting it ready for him to race. And then when he's back, cooling it off and everything, I like doing that. And then when we're off filming, we go race my car normally, except for right now because it's broke. Well, it's not broken. It's just not done. Um, that's what I liked, you know, and I'm just not the kind of person that could build a car and be content at being 10 or nine or anything, you know, I'm super competitive. So it would be, it's, it's a lot of work, you know, and it's obviously a lot of money and it might happen one day. I mean, someone was selling, it might still be for sale, um, a black CTSV, just like mine, um, it's a coupe and everything. Uh, he said he was selling it uh, maybe like a month or two ago and we looked into it and it's just, it's not something that I can afford right now. Um, especially because there's things that obviously like I would want to change, you know, and that's more on top of that. Um, so no, there's no like plan, you know, there's no set date. Like I'm going to start on this day. You know, if I do it, um, 
it'll be because I get, because I have the true want to do it and I'm ready to put everything into it to be competitive. You know, I just couldn't be someone that just did it to did it, to do it, you know? No, yeah, I understand. And, but you mentioned the Cadillac. So would that, if it were to happen, theoretically, would it be that vehicle? Like a CTS? I hope so. <laughs> that'd, hey, that'd be really cool. I hope so. Yeah. I love my car so much. Like, that having a big tire version of it would be amazing. And even, I don't know, maybe one day I'll be tired of all of the changes we just did, you know, and go big tire one day, who knows, but um, I hope it would be a CTSV, you know, that'd I just be, love that car. That'd be a perfect Instagram picture. You got the Escalade tone, the big tire car, then you got the Caddy Jack driving behind. Yeah. That would be sweet. So, you got, I mean, you guys got this nice new studio now. Oh, sorry. You guys got this nice new studio now and you just did the stream. It's okay. Sorry. Are there any mm -hmm. plans or could the fans hope to see some more stuff yes. like that in the future? Um, I would say yes. Um, as far as like the, I know a lot of people want like the more vlog style videos, you know? Um, or like how to's or in the shop and stuff. But um, to be really honest, like I'm not an editor <laughs> and I don't know how to do all of that. And um, I obviously, oh God. He's Skeleton's going. falling. He's going down. Um, <laughs> I could learn that stuff, um, but there are things, I know a lot of people are like, what do you do with your life? Like you don't ever do anything, you know? Um, but I do things. Um, like I run Midwest and do all of that. And there's a lot that obviously, like we said, a lot goes into racing Justin's car by itself. And then there's my car also. So we are just doing a lot. And I don't think that I necessarily have time to put aside right now for vlog style videos, but I would say yes, that they can expect more lifestyle videos i'm trying to be more on him about posting but sometimes he sucks but hey, you um, gotta post more because every time he makes okay. an instagram post i make sure to comment because every time i comment on one of his posts i gain a whole bunch mm -hmm. of followers <laughs> it's funny one final question i've got kind of to wrap everything up what is your biggest dream, goal, desire, or aspiration you could say? Now, this could be just life. This could be racing, <laughs> whatever you want. Like, what, what's that one thing? Oh, man. It's a pretty big know. question. I, so I apologize. It's, it's pretty big. <gasps> That's loaded. Um, I don't know. Like, I set a lot of goals for myself, you know. I think I'm very goal-driven. And I like to win, but like one goal isn't enough for me. You know, like it's, I always had the goal of like, I just want Candy Jack to go a nine. And then I hit nine and I was like, I want a 950. And then it's like, okay, I want an eight. Um, so build, but that goal isn't enough for me. You know, I'm super competitive. I think I just mostly have the, the goal to win. You know, everything that we do, we go into it wanting to win and that's I'll do anything to help him win. And I know that he'll do anything to help me win, you know? Um, I think, yeah, to win. And then like, I, my always goal is to not get discouraged because I used to always be like, uh, like if I fuck something up, you know, or I, I don't know. I forgot to set the tire pressure or something. I don't know. That doesn't happen. But um, if it was just something small, I'd be so hard on myself and be like, oh my God, I suck, you know, or like, wow. And I just try not to do that, you know, like I have to know that I'm a human and that I'm a, I make mistakes too, you know? So I think my goals are just unattainable. <laughs> so it's like win everything and don't be so hard on myself, you know? I don't have like, by this year, I want to do this or by this year, you know, I just oh, yeah, want to I win, do good and everything that we do is me, you know? Well, that's all I've got. Thank you so very much for doing Thank this. This is, this is awesome. A lot of fun. Do you have anything you'd like to say to the fans 
that will no. be watching. <laughs> There's a, I guarantee you, oh, just about everyone that watched this will be watching to the very end. Because people were so excited when they found out about this. I'm like, don't do that. Justin said, tell them what your role on the show is. Whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> He's making fun of me because I get all butthurt on certain comments about the whole girl thing, you know, like put her in a car or whatever, you know, like I don't need to be put in a car. I do whatever the fuck I want, you know. <laughs> Justin can't tell me what to do for the record. <laughs> um, I don't know. He's making fun of me. So I think that's it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate this. This was so much thank fun. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. And hopefully we'll be able to do, do something like this again sometime in the future. I can't thank you guys enough for doing this. And again, yeah. thank you so much for tuning into the streams. That's so cool. Like the first stream I did and I saw you guys in the chat, I was just blown away. And then you coming back every single week and watching it, typing the chat with everyone. It, it like I can't put into words how much it means. It truly does mean so much. And I can't thank you enough for that. And also, too, we talked about it the other day. Yeah, Sorry, we talked about it the other day that you you are the definition of an influencer. You know, <laughs> like we were talking about it, and that you are. So whenever, like, even okay. So I told you before, my mom would call me and she'd be like are you guys building another car not telling me? <laughs> and I was like, no, why? And she'd be like, we watched this, this kid's video on YouTube. And she said that you guys are building this car, you know? So she'd be like, you influenced my own mom, you know, to come yell at me that I didn't tell her. So I felt like I should come to you to give you good information that is solid, you know, so that you have things you can tell people, you know, and not like correct you on things, but like if there were things that we heard that we were like, where did he get that? You know, then we could be like, hey, it is the old attire, you know, whatever. That just is an example, you know, like just passing along information for you to share it because you are the influencer, you know, up here. So we thank you, you know, you, you, I think you do more for Street Outlaws than you realize. It's a really cool world of Street Outlaws, you know, and you're doing a lot for it, you know, so we thank you. Hey, yeah, thank you very much. And then thank you so much for making this video. I really had a great time. Hopefully, we, again, sometime in the future, we can maybe do something else. The fans leave comments in the comment section down below saying yeah. how they liked it. And also some other questions they may have, because like I said, people like, I, w I had a video where I asked people to ask questions, then you you answered most of the questions. Yeah, I, I realized that like halfway through. I was like, why am I doing this? I was like, these are supposed to be for another day, Jackie. Like, stop <laughs> it. I don't know. I just like people to be informed, you know? I think most of the hate that comes off of the show is just not being informed of something, you know, mm -hmm. a rumor or whatever it is you know but i think it's amazing what it's all turned into you know are you gonna say hi mm -hmm. he said no <laughs> it, it'll be it's a sneak peek for some time in the future the fans will be freaking out they hear big big chief in the background well that's all thank you so much i really enjoyed making this video fans can check out midweststreetcars.com yeah. first link in the description i'll put all your social medias and stuff down there thank you so much this really was fun and to all the fans thank you for watching well ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed that i apologize some spots with the internet were a bit dodgy that's my fault ladies and gentlemen my internet kind of sucks but that is all thank you all so much for watching thanks to those that are watching ttve make sure you guys check out midweststreetcars.com if you want to buy a shirt like this one you're seeing right here this is my favorite big chief shirt ladies and gentlemen or midwest streetcar shirt Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Make sure you guys check out MidwestCars.com. You can go to Samus XYZ for 20% off your order. First link down in the description. We'll take you directly to their store. Make sure you subscribe to the Midwest Streetcars YouTube channel. Follow Jackie and Chief on Instagram. Can't thank you guys enough for watching this. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Samus XYZ. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And this is Sam ABC XYZ signing out.